God win, you beast. Get up. Do you hear me? Wake up, you drunkards. Oh, fuck it out. Oh, where the... Oh, what the... Oh, who the hell are you? Oh, Henry. My great friend, Henry. Didn't we have a wonderful time? Well, you oh. certainly did, you old lecher. Now you better pull yourself together quick. You haven't much time. There's some water and something to eat on the table there, but if I were you, I would move my hairy arse before my flock eats me alive. Oh, stay in my head. Mm, my guts. My poor suffering stomach. Oh, what was that woman on about? Before my flock eats me alive, I've forgotten something. What have I forgotten? Where the fuck am I? What the fuck was it? Oh. Mass! Oh shit, I have to say mass. I gotta say mass. You have to help me. Ow! You're the priest. <sighs> I can't do it in this state. Maybe the liturgy. But I have to give a sermon as well. Oh, this is a disaster. They're gonna excommunicate me. I'd like to help you, but you can. You can do the sermon for me. What? So, first I investigate a murder no one wants investigated. <sighs> then I drunkenly keep the whole town up all night. And now you want me to preach at them from the pulpit? Do you want them to burn us at the stake? No. No, I've got it. Suppose it's Sir Ratzig's protege. You just came from studying in Prague. And you want to share the words of Master Jan Hus, who you recently heard preaching there. Henry, look, from what I remember, we might have overdone it a bit last night. And if the bailiff or someone else complains about me, the bishops can have my guts for garters. So I'd appreciate it if you stopped gaping at me like a stuffed squirrel and start helping. You're mad. You're stark raving mad. I'm not. It's a perfect plan. It's flawless. <coughs> oh. How about this? If you help me with this. I'll tell you who Lubosh's cronies are. We'll never get away with it. Not if you make a hash of it. So all at once the confessional seal isn't so sacred? Don't mock me. I won't give you a second chance. <sighs> well, all right. But I can't make any promises about what will happen. No, neither can I. What do you want me to do, exactly? I'll go and start the liturgy. Then I'll introduce you. You give the sermon I told you yesterday in the tavern, and that's that. No need to drag it out. If it turns out well, I'll tell you what I know about Lubos. Christ almighty. Fine, then. We have a deal. Wonderful. Let's get to it, then.
the shore. The swill pot. Look at him. He can hardly walk after his capers last night. You were with them, you beast. Just you wait. Look at him. Mother of God. Any minute now, we'll throw up. I couldn't sleep a wink last night with all that clamor. In nomine Patris, et Fili, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Accepit panem in sanctas at venerabiles amanus suas. <clears throat> Hoc facite in meam commemorationem. Brothers and sisters, you may have had the honor of meeting Henry from Scalitz, who is here at the behest of Sir Hanush to investigate that heinous crime at Neuha. You might not know that Henry recently visited Prague, where, by the grace of God, was able to hear Master Jan Hus from the esteemed Charles University preaching. I've managed to persuade Henry to stand here today in my stead and tell us what he heard. Because, as you all probably know, Jan Hus is a very popular preacher in Prague. So, Henry, you may begin. Now I'm curious. Curious which one of them will puke first. Brothers and sisters, let me get straight to the point. I'd like to talk about the church and how corrupt it is. That boy has a cheek. One should not believe in the church because the church is not God. God is above all things and the church is but a means to salvation which the prelates do not care to hear. He's right. It is the corruption of God's pastors here on earth that has brought misfortune on our heads. Plague, humans, hunger and chaos. The accursed wealth that the church is drowning in is poisoning almost the whole of Christendom. When dogs are fighting over a bone, take the bone and they will stop. Just like the flock of ravens that has descended on this land to peck up every speck of gold and silver. They show no mercy. Their hearts are poisoned by covetousness. They trade everything. Everything is for sale. You want to baptise a child? Pay. You want to steal and murder? Pay and you will have absolution. And the prelates sin and give themselves absolution. For well, shame. Shame upon them. And what sins? They live with harlots and keep concubines, even though only marital intercourse for the purpose of procreation is pure. If someone takes a woman or man only to satisfy their own lust, who seduces them to do so but Satan? And how much darker the sin if that man is a servant of the church? Who can turn his face to God, who fornicates and then puts on priestly robes? Nothing we don't know about already. Enough about sin, which the prelates are so fond of preaching about, and whose absolution they promise if you only pay enough coin to Mother Church. What if the devil himself were to pay? Will the bishops tell us he too would ascend to heaven? And what about those bishops? 
They sin without remorse, and with the money grasped from the poor for indulgences, they keep fine horses and hordes of servants to pamper them. They play dice and garb their mistresses in expensive furs, while Christ, the Lamb of God, walked barefoot and had nowhere to lay his head. Look to your consciences, you robbers of the poor, for you are seen by God and his people too. Down with the pallets! Away with them! We're fortunate to have our good father Godwin. At least he's a fair and simple man. Hear my words then. The church is corrupt and her servants seek their own gain more than the salvation of your souls. A priest who fornicates and indulges in gluttony and intoxication is no priest at all. You would do better to be your own priests, each and every one of you, for you have no need for such Pharisees and hypocrites to attain salvation. Yes, down with the hypocrites, down with Godwin. That is all I heard in Prague. Amen. Have you no shame, you pair of buffoons? I'll be writing to the bishop of this. For shame. Utterly blasphemous. Can you believe such behavior? For men of the cloth to get drunk in pigs in church. So, is our deal still on? Are you pulling my fucking pizzle? I couldn't have done worse myself if I'd puked on the altar. Well, I'm no preacher. Yeah, I noticed. And I wasn't the only one. You can't be serious. After all that. All what? All you making a complete hash of my sermon? You were supposed to help, not get me into even more trouble. Now I'll have the bishop on my back and all the villagers. Just leave. I need to pull myself together. And what am I supposed to do? Find someone else to help you. Show up. The swill pup. Look at him. He can hardly walk after his capers last night. You were with him, you beast. Just you wait. Look at him. Mother of God. Any minute now, we throw up. Brothers and sisters, let me get straight to the point. I'd like to talk about the church and how corrupt it is. That boy has a cheek. Just as we are commanded to obey the priests in matters of virtue, so are we commanded to defy them face to face if they live contrary to God's commandments. Hear that, Godwin? It is the corruption of God's pastors here on earth that has brought misfortune on our heads. Plague, cumans, hunger and chaos. The accursed wealth that the church is drowning in 
is poisoning almost the whole of Christendom. When dogs are fighting over a bone, take the bone and they will stop. Just like the flock of ravens that has descended on this land to peck up every speck of gold and silver. They show no mercy. Their hearts are poisoned by covetousness. They trade everything. Everything is for sale. You want to baptize a child? Pay. You want to steal and murder? Pay and... For shame! Shame upon them! It is the custom of the gluttonous prelates and monks to preach against sin. But what do they know of us ordinary folk? Let us remember the marriage at Cana, where our Lord Jesus Christ himself feasted with the other guests and drank his fill. And when the wine was gone, he performed a miracle and created more. He, whose companions were poor travellers, simple folk, prostitutes and troublemakers, performed a miracle so the feast could continue. Now that's the kind of sermon I like to hear. No, brothers and sisters, Jesus did not condemn alcohol. Drink to lighten the cross you bear in this veil of tears, but not with such abandon that you cannot keep holy the Sabbath. For there should be moderation in all things, and it is not drinking itself that is sinful, but intemperance and beastly indulgence. He's right! Enough about sin! which the prelates are so fond of preaching about, and whose absolution they promise if you pay enough coin to Mother Church. What if the devil himself were to pay? Will the bishops tell us he too would ascend to heaven? And what about those bishops? They sin without remorse, and with the money grasped from the poor for indulgences, they keep fine horses and hordes of servants to pa- They play dice. Look to your consciences. Down with the prelates, away with them. We're fortunate to have our good father Godwin. At least he's a fair and simple man. God sees what is happening on earth, and he is filled with righteous wrath that those who should seek the salvation of souls instead seek mammon and the idle comfort of lucrative posts. Blessed are the shepherds who share the poverty of their flock, who are as one with you, and bear with you the burden of this earthly pilgrimage, who do not condemn your venial sins. Aye, all honour to Godwin. Let him drink like one of us. That is all I heard in Prague. Amen. Dad spoke well, considering what a soak he is. He's right, Dallas. The young man shouldn't drink so much, but the Lord's given him a silver tongue. I don't suppose I'll ever get to Prague. He told it nicely. Well, well, my boy, you have talent, and I can't deny it. And you pulled a thorn from my side. I almost didn't make it. Yeah, I noticed. Well, I wasn't the only one. Well, what's to be done? I'll make it up somehow. So, about our bargain. Although it's a sin. Uh, so gluttony and fornication. God does forgive a penitent. So, what did Limpy Lubosch tell you? Was he at Neuhof that day? Who was with him? And, and, and where are they now? Now, slow down. I'm sorry, but he didn't tell me that much. Don't let me down after all I've been through. For you? Well, now Lubos came to me shortly after it happened. And his conscience was gnawing at him. And I must say, uh, in the end, he turned out to be a better man than he looked. He said they'd been hired through some crony of theirs. And at first they were just to steal some horses. But then it all turned sour and people started getting killed. And neither he nor his cronies wanted anything to do with that. So they fell out from the gang and fled. Fell out? Yeah, there was a body found in the woods by Neuhof. Um, that would explain something. Uh, Lubos kept jabbering that he wasn't a murderer, that he didn't want to do it. So I know that Lubos killed the murderer and he's dead too. The trouble is, I need to find the ones who are still alive. 
I need names and places. Did he mention any of the others? Uh, only nicknames. Uh, he talked about some fella called Riki from Ladechko, Pius, Timmy. Pius. <laughs> that lot are about as pious as I am ordained. Nonsense. You would make an excellent priest. And anyhow, with your skills, you ought to be able to sniff out this Riki from Ladechko, right? <laughs> Well, we'll have to now. There's not much else to go on. Let's hope he's not hanging from the wall, too. <sighs> Indeed. And I'd hate to be excommunicated for nothing. Anyhow, good luck. You watch out for yourself. These people clearly mean business. And I'd like to raise a tankard with you again sometime. Yeah, I'll try. Although I'm not sure I'd survive another night of your debauchery. And if anyone should ask, you heard nothing from me. I'll deny everything. <laughs> I don't doubt it. What's the matter? Wouldn't you like to measure your skills against mine? In combat, you mean? I fear there's nothing else I know, friend. Who are you, anyway? And what do you do? Me? I'm just a wayfarer with a sword. I roam the world trying to earn a crust, that's all. So you're a bandit? You do me an injustice. I try to avoid banditry. Although, last winter I had to resort to that too. Would you dare to face me? All right, why not? Excellent. I trust you have something to wager. Aye, right, I have. I'm glad to hear it. Let's get to it then. coin and be on your way there now pay up and be on your way what the hell 